This week, we're playing Waterloo. Pub Battles Waterloo. This time we're playing with the developing orders rules for pub battles, which I really like. Now the way I'm doing it this time is the French write orders. Wellington is by himself. The British Army didn't really run under a core system, per se. So instead, I'm going to allow Wellington to activate once per turn during the chit draw. There'll be no British chits to draw. When Wellington is activated, those blocks that are within his command range can move. The French and Prussians will use the regular orders rules. And so it begins. Durland's corps attacks. Lobau, six corps artillery, fires on the British liner opposite of him. The weapons fire was very accurate. Ordinarily, the French player would lunge forward with Lobau's corps and attack the hole in the line. But these are with orders. I couldn't count on the artillery being effective, and so I just have Durland's corps holding. Also, Napoleon and the guard do not play with orders. They can move independently. Next, Riley's artillery opens up on the British line opposite. Again, the French artillery is unusually effective. Riley's corps is ordered to attack, and his troops jump forward. I elect to have Wellington activate now. I flip him up to indicate that he is activated. His cavalry is in command, and he moves them forward. He organizes Alton's men and sends them back into the line. And the Prussians enter. The French have taken La Haie Sun, but Pepelo holds. The British line is in shambles, but the French have taken grievous losses. I've written new orders for turn two. I pull back. 1st and 2nd Corps, order 6th Corps forward on the left, and the cavalry forward in the center. Plus, I move the guards into position. In turn 2 here, the French have all written new orders, so you can see they've all flipped, they're all flipped up, which means they can't alter the turn order. I need to pull back the 1st and 2nd Corps while bringing the cavalry and the guard forward. Let's see how this works. Minos 4th Corps moves to take command of La Haie Sang. The Prussian 4th Corps continues on. The strung out Prussian line is slowly crawling into the French position. Napoleon moves the guard forward. Lobau 6th Corps advances, and his artillery shells Hugomont to no effect. Riley's 2nd Corps forms up behind the guard. Kellerman's 3rd Cavalry Corps charges through the break in the line, and they use the charge rule to attack now. They destroy some Allied infantry and Picton's men fall back. Wellington activates now. He forms up Picton's men, and his artillery opens up Amilo's cavalry. Though with them tucked behind La Haie Sainte, it's not effective. And he sends in the Household Guard cavalry. What remains of Durland's first corps falls back to Planchenois, and Zeton and Blucher make an entrance. And combat. Lobau's troops meet with mixed success. Wellington's cavalry charge has destroyed Milo's 4th Cavalry Corps. Turn 3, it's late afternoon. The Prussians are seen. I know that if I didn't use the orders rules, I'd have very specific ideas on how I'd like to meet different guys where. But when I have to write it in specific orders within the strictures of the orders system, it's trickier. It's simplified and more realistic because I can't be having everybody run off on their own on little tangents trying to do this, that, or the other thing. Here we go, starting with Lobau's six. Next, the Guard Corps, and they charge. The Guards, Chasseurs are Cheval, charge into the exhausted, confused rear of the Household Guard. Also, as per the charge rule, this is resolved immediately. The Household Guard manages to run off. I'd like to stop there, but following orders, the Grenadiers attack. This is artillery, so it fires first. The Grenadiers are driven back. The Prussian 4th Corps moves on. Seaton, Blucher, and the Rush Prussian 1st Corps come online. Following their orders, Durland's 1st Corps guards Planchenois. Kellerman's cuirassiers charge again. They also can use the charge rule, and they do. Picton's men are not to be trifled with. They do their damage and then fall back. On comes the second Prussian Corps. 
And now we'll resolve regular combat. The Brunswickers prove to be a hard nut to crack. Lobau's lancers are lost, and his troops are thrown back. Now turn four, things are critical. The French have bypassed Hugomont, leaving excellent British troops cut off. Wellington would like to go up and order them out of there. Order them to do something. But his bags are exposed and within striking range of Kellerman's cavalry. All he has to defend them are the spent and reversed remnants of Picton's men and some light cavalry. This has to be a priority. It's a tough decision, but he knows what he must do. Wellington goes first. The artillery fires point blank at Kellerman's cuirassiers. Sixth Corps lunges forward with its new orders. The French Guard's cuirassiers charge the exhausted Brunswickers. The Lancers charge the Household Guard. With devastating results, the Household Guard falls back. The Guard continues the assault on the artillery. And then the Grenadiers charge. The heroic artillery is finally lost. The Prussian 2nd Corps, under perch, continues on. Kellerman's cuirassiers charge. Blucher and Zeton continue to bring on 1st Corps. Buell's 4th Corps keeps coming on. Now we do the rest of turn 4 combat. And now it is turn 5. The French need to destroy three more British infantry blocks. Picton's here. There are two here in Hugomont and four here around Papalo. But these four around Papalo are about to be surrounded by all these Prussians. These are desperate days for the French. This is not going to be easy to do. They, pipe, they bypass too many troops, too many good British troops, in their attempt to break the center. This is going to be a very near-run thing. The score is being sent forward. The guard is being sent all the way up to Waterloo. And 1st and 2nd Corps are being sent against Papalo. Now this is kind of a confusing battle, and, with, and ordinarily, each Chitra would be involved with all sorts of decisions. So I want to do this, so I want to try to get over here. But with the graphic orders, the answers are pretty clear. Lobau 6th Corps is ordered right there. Now I'd like to keep watch on Hugo Mall, but by the way the orders rules works, is if I'm supposed to be here, facing that way, Everyone has to be facing that way. The line you draw is called the limit of advance. Everyone has to be at or facing the limit of advance. Next is guard. Now without written orders, I'd for sure send someone over to <clears throat> get a flank attack there. But the guard's orders are not to go run around over here or go run around over here. They're ordered to occupy Waterloo. That's what they do. The guard, of course, uses the charge rule. We resolve this right now. The Household Guard Cavalry falls back. The Dutch Militia Cavalry also falls back. Foot attacking cavalry, the cavalry can just fall back. Riley's 2nd Corps has been ordered to attack Papalo. Kellerman's Cuirassiers have been ordered to attack Papalo. They charge it from behind. Inflicting two hits on the Militia, which eliminates them. Wellington elects to activate. He must protect the bags. Picton's men fall back to the woods. If he can just frustrate their attempts to reach the bags before night. He orders the bags off into the woods, and then the Prussians move. Bulow moves on Planchenois. Purchase Second Corps moves up, and Zeton and Blucher explode onto the scene right into the French flanks. And finally, Durland's First Corps has been ordered to attack Pepelo. On the way, they slam into Bulow's flank. Lobau's drive runs into a detachment of British with expected results. And now the Prussian Dragoons flank attack on the French Guard. The Grenadiers fall back. And they continue, pressing into the Old Guard. But they know their limitations and they fall back. The Kellerman's Chasseurs fall back. Now in Papala, this looks like a flank attack, but Papala is a fortification and it cannot be flanked. So it's a regular attack. The Lancers are destroyed, but the British are overrun. So here we are at turn six. The British army is close to breaking. One more infantry block and they're broke. But at the same time, the Prussians have come swarming in. Now maybe without written orders, I might be able to do some drone solo attacks and British infantry units, but this is graphic orders 
and I have to write orders that make sense. I can't respond to things that I wouldn't know about, and I can't just order individual units to go do things. The orders go out to each core commander. Here we are on turn six, early evening. Now I could hem and haw all day about what how these written orders are going to come out, but you know what? I've kind of given myself a, a two-minute time limit to write the orders for each side. So I just got to come up with something right now. Napoleon doesn't give up on occupying Waterloo, but he orders Lobau to do it, and he redirects the guard east into the Prussians. Now he pulls his, Kellerman's cavalry back to recover, and he sends the guard east along with Riley's 2nd Corps and Lobo's 1st Corps. They're all going east. And when I get here pointing this out, I realize I forgot to do this combat. And that kind of worked out to equal losses. Ah, regrets. Now I'm thinking I should have ordered the guard to attack Hugo Ma. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Let's see how this plays out. And Waterloo is only a 7 turn game. It doesn't start until noon and then runs late in the evening. So we have, so the French have two turns to destroy one more British infantry block. Six Corps advances. The Guard advances. Kellerman falls back to reorganize. Second Corps advances east. First Corps has been ordered to advance east as well, but all they have is an artillery, a detachment, and their bags. Artillery cannot attack. They will fire though. And they send the Prussians, in somewhat disorder, tumbling back. Once again, the voice is heard, Babaj! And Blucher's Prussians attack the guard. Purchase Second Corps presses west. And finally, Bulow's Fourth Corps presses forward into Plenchenois. And last, Wellington activates. His hussars support the Prussians. And he informs the defensive wall as his bags get out of danger. Combat turn six. And the guard falls back from the Prussians, with little help from the British cavalry on the flank. And against the Prussians south of Hapolo. The battle is indecisive, and the French artillery defending Planchenois. The Prussian advance is driven back, and Lobal rescues his artillery. Now we're on to the last turn, final efforts. And this is what it comes down to. Actually, I've just counted up the total starting size of the British force at Waterloo. And they actually only have 12 blocks to start with, which is what I have here. So the British Army breaks at six, and they had lost six a few turns ago. Guess what? Napoleon has won Waterloo. It was close. Good game. Okay, I've played this game close to 200 times, this particular Waterloo battle and I've never read the victory conditions correctly. The difference is that the victory totals include cavalry. Ordinarily, in regular pub battles, it includes only infantry losses. In neither case do you count detachments or artillery. The British break at eight. Here are seven infantry blocks and one cavalry block. That's eight. The British have broken. The French need 12. Here they have five infantry and four Cavalry, that's nine. So even though I was calculating it incorrectly, in this instance, it doesn't change anything. But it is something to note. For the Battle of Waterloo, your cavalry losses count. Good game.